This is my first piece I've ever done sort of for art's sake. I've always been a craftsman in my life. And uh, when I started thinking about what I could do, I've been messing around with uh, digital photography and computer programs to do various things. And I sort of took all my crafts and the skills that I built over life and I tried to put together in some sort of digital form but yet make it traditional in a sense. Um, the piece is made up of 1,995 tiles. And each tile is a single image somehow related to Mexico and its culture, people, places, food. I was born in southern Mexico and I grew up in Mexico and she was very important when I grew up. She in itself is almost a religion upon herself. And she's, she's very different than typical saints in that she wasn't made by priests. It was sort of made by the people. And indigenous persons had a vision of, of her appear to them in a mountain. And so there's a lot of mysticism behind it. She's very magical, and it seems to the influence she has over people is very beautiful. It makes a very positive energy on people, and I've never seen anything negative or political come from her. It's much more about the people, and that's what drove me to make it. Um, the, the lighting itself, I don't know, I was trying to um, create emotion through color. I'm not sure if I accomplished that, but so it's being driven by a genetic algorithm computer program is driving it, and it's evolving. It's not ramp. It's uh, the beginnings of artificial intelligence that's driving the light. So they, they're always changing, and there are rules of life, of death and life between each of them. And as they relate to each other, it affects whether they live or die. And um, what else did I think about it? It took a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so let's open up for some questions for Virgil. Anyone have any questions? I have mean, uh, a question. Virgil, can you talk about the process for getting the images? You said there's almost 2,000 images. What's the process you engage in to collect those? At the same time, I, I created, I, well, I took some programs and, and cobbled them together that acted as a spider. And it goes out to the internet and searches for images on Flickr, Picasso, Google. And uh, the neat thing about it is that it looks for specific images for the, you know, for words in the title or the metadata and certain size. And it goes and gets those, but the neat thing is that it goes back to the original, to the source, not the cached image that Google has or Picasso. And it brings those back to me. And I don't know, I got about 5,000 images, which then I edited down to these. And I tried to get rid of all sort of commercial pictures of people that, you know, that were copyrighted. I wanted more sort of snapshots of people on vacation or eating something. And except for maybe like the superheroes or famous people that are in there from Mexico, most of them are snapshots of people on vacation. Uh, it has a lot of the heroes I grew up with. There's this famous guy named Kaliban, which is Mexico's superhero. <laughs> most people have never heard of. He was uh, this sort of like six foot seven white dude that wore a turban with a K in his head with his sidekick <laughs> Selene, which is this uh, black kid from, from uh, Northern Africa. And they went all over the world saving women, mainly beautiful women, and he, um, he didn't have any special powers from like any sort of, like he was born different than anybody else, but he practiced a holistic life. He always meditated and ate well and did a lot of exercise, and that's what made him a superhero. And uh, as a kid, we had 2.30 in the afternoon every day, and they're still on today. The Kaliman would come on, it's Kaliman, el hombre increíble. <laughs> it was this great thing. It's like, uh, it, was, it was like a movie in your head. It was done so well by his trips everywhere. Uh, like at one point you got a third eye, and uh, it was really crazy. And Selena's somewhere in there too. And that's how I learned to read, because then we also got the little comics. And that's how, as a kid, learned how to read. Virgil, I think we have another question for you. Sure. How long did it take to do uh, I don't know, the whole process about about four months. I had, I had help from my friends. Uh, my fingers are still sore. <laughs> pressing it down, is amazing. pressing 2,000 tiles, it was hard. Harder than I ever planned. Can you tell us about the algorithm that drives the lights? Yeah, it's called a one-dimensional cellular automaton. And it was brought up by this mathematician named Wolfram. And so I don't know if you've heard of Wolfram Alpha. It's a very popular mathematics case that you know, sort of solves problems like Google. And um, the neat thing about it is that it, the rules are that like, if its neighbor within three lights is alive or dead of a certain intensity, it will affect that guy's life or death. So if it's closer to death, the other one is going to die too. And that's how they keep evolving over time. So you see sometimes they chase each other. Uh, sometimes the whole thing is really intense, like they're all alive, you know, and then all of a sudden it'll go complete darkness. I mean, I had it where there's one light for like a minute and there's absolutely nothing going on. Cool. Um, 
Next, we're going to 